Hey there, I am Christy Ruffino, former broke single mom turned CEO of two six-figure businesses and best-selling author with 15 books. But it wasn't always like this. Not long ago, I was a hot mess. Yes, I did a lot of things right, but mostly I was throwing spaghetti on the wall to see what would stick. Fast forward past many failed attempts and a few incredible victories, I not only get to share what I've learned along the way, I get to bring together top influencers as they share their empowering stories, insider secrets, and valuable resources that can be used right now to step into your power. So if you're an ambitious entrepreneur, or possibly one in the making, and you're looking to create a business and life that lights you up, well then you're in the right place. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of the Mastery Unleashed podcast. This is Christy Ruffino, and I want to welcome you to today's show. Either you are a brand new visitor or you're a longtime loyal fan. Either way, I know you're going to love my guest who I have in store for you. She is a fireball. She's amazing. And I know I took a bunch of notes when I wasn't just captivated listening to her because she had some great strategies on how we can attract clients consistently. And she has years of experience, over 25 years of experience in marketing, sales, and operations by working with startups and the biggest companies on the planet. Her name is Christine Campbell Rappin. She is a business mentor, advisor, and the owner of Clear Accelerations Incorporated. She is an energetic, tell it like it is, advisor, mentor, consultant, and speaker. She believes that businesses can be eloquently simple when you know what to focus on to create success. Christine is also an internationally best-selling co-author. She holds a bachelor's in communication and an MBA in international business. And I know that sounds all great on paper, but wait till you listen to today's show and make sure either you have paper and a pen to take notes, or you've got your notes out on your phone to take notes, or you plan to listen again, because she's really sharing some great stuff that I found to be super helpful. And I know you will will too. Plus, make sure you hang on to the end because she is giving away a free gift that you're going to want to make sure you sign up for. So without me talking any further, let's go ahead and turn the show over to myself talking with Christine Campbell Rappin. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to today's show. I'm really excited to have this conversation today with Christine Campbell Rappin. Welcome, Christine. Whoop, whoop. Excited to be here. Ah, yeah, I'm excited to have you. We had a great conversation before I hit record, and I'm like, All right, stop, we got we to gotta continue this on screen so we can share some of this great stuff. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is how to attract clients consistently and that's the key right like we can get clients but to have a consistent flow of clients makes our job so much easier and now we can focus on serving our clients more instead of hunting them down absolutely hunting is bad yes hunting <laughs> is bad so uh, we're not going to dive into any of the strategies yet because we have to first start about start and talk about you your mm -hmm. story and how you kind of got into this place you know, it's an interesting story. And in the fact, a couple things. I am a Canadian, first off, uh, but I have a very global business because I myself am quite 
global. I've lived in five countries and 30 cities. No, I didn't oh, come wow. from Five and countries. Five countries. Wow. And it never occurred to me that I wouldn't build a business that was global. And I did know from a really young age that I would grow a bit and build a business. I did. That, I think that's one of my earliest childhood games that I imagined doing was building a business. And I didn't know what it would be. And so much through my 20s and 30s, I quit myself in the world of business. I was educated in the world of business. And I worked in unrelated industries, nine of them, in fact. And I started in marketing. And I kept saying, it's pretty, now what? That was really irritating for the marketing folks. And that ended up in a sales role uh, because I, they're like, what do you in front of the customer? I said, they're going to ask that. Sales will ask that. And then that led to, we have a beautiful idea. Somebody wants to see it come to life and then operations would fall apart. And I'm like, why can't we deliver what we promised? And mm -hmm. so I ended up in that part of the world as well. And through all of that, of course, you're building teams, influencing people, casting visions. And if you don't have money in the bank to pay for it, or at the end of the day, you didn't keep your job. And so I came up through this world of business and people kept saying to me, so when are you going to start doing something? I'm like, I don't know. If I knew what I wanted to create, I would just go create it. And I had no clue what I would, would do. Until a really random connection email came through LinkedIn from someone I worked 10 years ago with halfway around the world in a completely unrelated industry. We'd worked in the beauty industry. And at the time I was in a pharmaceutical role. She's like, I, I don't understand how you ended up there, but I want to know if you want to talk about business. Cause I always remembered you as wanting to be in business. And I thought that's such a weird thing for me because I, was not friendly with this person. We weren't social friends. We weren't spending time in the pub and the weekends together, but I had left an impression that I wanted to create a business. Hmm. And she remembered me for that reason and reached out to me and I said, I'm so freaking curious that you remember my name. Yeah, <laughs> Absolutely, I wanna jump on a Zoom call and figure out what you're doing and vice versa. And I didn't get out of bed on Wednesday to start a business. I had started my first business by Friday. And it's such a funny story because I swanned into the kitchen. My then fiance was making a cup of coffee and putting on the kettle for me to make tea. And I said, you know, something casually like along the lines of, babe, I, I started a business. He's like, you did what? <laughs> it's like, oh, no big deal. Was, I woke up. I was pouring coffee. Business, yeah. <laughs> He's like, you did, you did what? And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go do, I'm going to go start creating a business. And he's like, we're about to be married. We should probably have had a conversation around this. And I was like, well, I'd never been married before. And so I was like, well, I missed, I missed the I instruction it, manual. That memo, right? <laughs> so, okay, well, why we, we should have this conversation now, but I've already made the decision. And he's like, okay, well, what does it mean to us? I said, I'm going to start building my first business. And I'm going to commit one hour a day. And that's where it all started. And I was growing my business on top of my corporate career and having kids that were in sports and a very hectic life as everyone does. But it was because I was building one hour a day and people started to see success. They started to say to me, what the heck are you doing in that one hour? Yeah. Whether that was 10 minutes in Starbucks at a hotel overnight for business or just, you know, it wasn't often 60 minutes, like from front to end. And I said, well, I treat my business like a business. And that's a glib t-shirt for most people. And a mm -hmm. lot of coaches say it. Yeah. I actually knew what to create a business, what it meant and what needed to be focused on. So people kept offering to buy me coffee or a glass of wine, depending on their crowd with me, and said, tell me how to run a business. And I said, business is elegantly simple. And I would tell them, just as I'll happily tell your audience, well, this is how it takes to grow a business, any business, whether you're a solopreneur, freelancer, or running a multi-million dollar big teamed business, the foundations are the same. And I know that because I've worked and seen it in every industry, in every job function. And then people kept saying, I can actually see it. Now that you describe it to me, I can see you doing it but I can't do it for myself. Mm, yeah. Can I pay you for your time? And I was like, paying for time is a waste of time, but I will be a thinking partner with you if you'd like. And that started actually the business I'm in now where I'm a, I'm a mentor. Because if you're new to business and you don't know the world of business, a lot of people struggle to see success. And it's heartbreaking watching people give up on their dreams. But I said, if you understand the rules, and the foundational pieces, and you fill your gaps, you'll beat the odds. And that gave birth to where I am now. And I have an amazing opportunity to sit shotgun on somebody else's dreams 
leveraging all of the knives, daggers, fun successes I've had to say, you might not know what to ask, but it might be a couple of steps ahead. And I might be able to help you know what questions to ask and then sit with you until you can think through what is the right answer for you and then pick your lane and run in it. And so that leads me to where I am today. And it's something I never set out to do. I set out to be a great entrepreneur. And because that was my goal, other entrepreneurs said, maybe I need to hold your hand. And I said, well, let's go play together and build yeah. something. This is your dream. And I'm, I'm really privileged to be invited in. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So what kind of uh, people do you help? Like, tell me a little bit more about what is an ideal client for you? Mm -hmm. So I work with, with people who would characterize themselves as creatives. And so what I mean by that is well, often creatives have two challenges in the world of business. One they feel constrained by creating the structure of a business because they think instinctively it will mean boring yeah, and it'll mean stifling, which is not true at all if you work with somebody who understands the way creatives run. So I work with creatives, everything from people who are in the marketing space, so it might be uh, brand agencies, people who are in the video space, creating something, graphics designers, copywriters, things like that. But I also work with people, I would say, who are creators who are selling an intangible thing. So it might be professional services. It might be in that coaching space. It might be in that idea of you have to cast a vision that is focused on guiding somebody to results and we need to create a structure around it. And I said, I'm not going to stick you in a box. I'm going to help you find what lane feels really creative for you and always be asking that simple question. What's the piece that feels completely illogical that's creative for you? Because we right. need you to stay in that space, even if it's not the best fundamental business decision. I said, because it keeps you motivated, but creatives need to be able to know they can stay creative and still have structure so they can create stable income mm -hmm. and impact because they're impact driven. Yeah. And they're all like, but most people don't get the marketing space of a creative. They don't get how marketing and sales are connected. Most marketing people don't understand sales. Right. Sales people don't understand, don't understand marketing. marketing. Right. Yeah. And creatives don't understand all of the aspects of business, right? Because they have their space, they have their lane, they have the things that they're so good at. And they're like, I just want to, I just want to deliver. And I said, okay, if you just want to deliver, go get a job. If mm -hmm. you really want to create, deliver in all your fun ways, then it's a business and let's build you the business that you really want. Because to me, I always said people, I don't really care what, what, whether you want to stay a solopreneur or whether you want to build teams, collaborations, or, or see that big, big picture. I only care that you get the lifestyle you want out of it. Mm, yeah. And I said, any number you want, pick it. You choose your number of uh, my destiny and lifestyle feels like this number. I said, can you repeat it? Was it worth it? And do you know how you got there? And if the answers aren't clear, then you're not in your lane. We got to find it. And I think some of the cha challenges when I first started people asking me to, to mentor formally, I said, I really don't like what I see in the coaching space because yeah. people are, a lot of people have come into the business world as business coaches without having the ability to pull the pieces together. They may have taken education, but if you've not had to make decisions, which are multi-million dollar people's lives, it's scary to put your trust in them to help you build yours because you will have some big wobbles in your business at any level. Yeah. And having somebody who says, I've been through some really great things, and but I've had to pick myself up more than once, having somebody to help you do that, I think is a really big accelerator. And so creatives, I said, I love working with them because I said, I can create ideas. Like it's so fun, it's like popcorn to me. It just constantly pops. I said, what will we do with it to see it breathe and then see it float to a new possibility? Yeah. And that's really who I love to serve the most. I love how you talked about uh, the coaches in the industry, because there are so many people that are very, very qualified and they've taken all of the classes and have all of the, the degrees, but there's something to be said for real life experience. Mm -hmm. You know, you have learned through your journey, things that you can't learn in a, in a program, you know, it's yeah. just completely different. And so for somebody the butterflies. that butterflies, yeah. Yeah. butterflies are different. It's like, wow, I really have to make that decision. Yeah. Yeah. You're the leader of your vision. <laughs> it is up to you. I always tell people, 
you have to be your own engine, but you don't have to be your only fuel source. And when you're having to make that decision of today, I'm hiring a contractor and they're betting on me, mm -hmm. or I have to fire a contractor because they're, they're not helping my reputation. Or I thought I could get, I didn't know I was offside here. And suddenly, you know, you get a letter from a lawyer from Getty saying, you've used images that weren't yours. Like it happens to small business. And I think if you haven't been through it, I've been through everything from startup to big business in my corporate career, both sides of the spectrum. It's really important to be able to have a really robust network. And if you haven't oh. been building one in the world of business, I said, I might not be able to solve it, but I bet I know somebody who could help. Completely. And let's connect yeah. you to that. And, and when you're working with a, either a coach or a mentor or anybody, the big thing you don't even know from day one is your ability to make decisions and access information is so much higher because they've got a really big network yeah and building trusted partners just takes some of the guesswork out of it right because you don't have to and you will not know everything but if you know somebody that does there you go problem solved yeah, yeah. And go I'm scared this is happening in my business like okay let's talk about it yeah and then, you know, it, it is really a fun conversation and it's not always comfortable. <laughs> I just wrapped up with a client and he's like, I look back at how far we come and it blows my mind. And some of the things you've said to me are still stinging. And I said, but they meant with kindness. He said, I know because I'm in my own way. Yeah. Yeah. I said, well, what's the invitation? He's like, execute what I know the path is. Mm -hmm. I know the decision needs to be made. I've been dogging it for six months. I said, well, when you make it, what happens? He said, I'll be back hiring you because it will push through the door. And then I won't know what's on the other side, but I need somebody to help me build it. I'm like, mm -hmm. awesome. Well, let me know when the decision's met. I'm send me, this is your safe word. Text it to me when it happens. <laughs> Not today. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so you shared your story. I want you to share a, a real short, before we go on break, a client story. Yeah, so I want to talk about um, one of my clients and this is, is somebody who's still with me today. So she and I had actually met networking and she right away said to me, I'd like to work with you. And I said, I'm curious why you want to work with me. She said, because you come from the marketing space. Mm. So she knew that I understood her industry and could take a lens at it. She said, but your chapter is ahead of where I'm at. And when we first worked together, her big struggle was crossing path past the place where she was day-to-day -day delivering to leading more and not in a day-to-day -day world. And one of the big shifts has been, what do you want your business to look like? And how do you have faith in the client growth that other people can work with you and you know you can pay their salaries, whether they're contractors or employees, both were on the table in this particular client's case. And she said, I, I want to be able to sleep at night knowing I can pay them and I'm working with good people. And one of the big challenges as we started to create that client engine was all she could see was her own marketing and the how and the behind the scenes. I said, okay, this, this is great. I'm glad you have such a systemic way to deliver results for your clients, but your clients don't care about that mm. as a prospect. They will care about it when they're paying their bills every month on retainer, but we shifted the business model to create more value. We looked at what does your client need to hear, see, and feel for them to have faith to put their money in your hands. And when we started to talk about stay in movement, we started kind of working, I would say almost a year ago this time, it was in the fall. We contracted in the spring to start in the fall. There's a hint there, by the way, contract in the spring to start in the fall. And by Christmas, she had moved her business 3x, mm. 300%, contracted more revenue to start the year than she'd had all of the year. And seven months into her contract, she's like, I just want to ask. And to be clear, I want to stay another year, keep my space working with me, because we were really starting to see the progress. But as her business was growing, guess what was happening? the dynamics and the team are shifting. Mm. The team's like, now I want some more of the revenue. How come I'm not compensated for that? And some dynamics are shifting. I said, now you're leading, not just delivering your own expertise. You're doing a great job in internal communication. How's the client experience going? Some of the ripples are starting to crack because the workload and capacity is growing. So capacity is a solvable problem, but you've got to manage your reputation in the marketplace. What do you want? in the business right now. And when we had this great crescendo of the marketing engine really starting to turn on with strong, well-qualified, eager, fun new clients in her business, 
I said, your tendency right now, I will tell you right now is to take your foot off the gas. She's like, yeah, I can't wait. I've got, no, I've got, I don't want more clients. Like I can't, I know it's solvable, Christine, but I'm not solving it right now. I, I'm moving, I'm changing locations. I've got my team on holiday. Like we all are barely breathing. I said, if you take your foot off the gas now, you'll have no clients in the fall. Right. Yeah. She's like, I don't, I don't need new clients. I said, I will tell you just from a rhythm of what I've seen, this is a risk. And we managed to slow down the speed, but not take our foot off the gas. Because if you have your foot on the gas and on the brake, you're in neutral. The goal is to keep the engine running. And we've seen phenomenal success with this client. She's added four new staff members to her business. She's elevating her stuff to do more creative work for her, which is now moving from delivery of, she's a, uh, runs a media company or a marketing agency. So instead of being in the weeds of the marketing itself, She's client relationship. She's coaching. She's actually helping people and she's elevating her profit. And she's like, this feels like a lot of fun. And guess what? I'm now the magnet. Yeah. People are coming to me and I'm like, yes, yes this is why great. we're doing it. She's like, I can't believe that when things get scary, I'm so glad she's like, half time I feel like it's therapy. Half time I'm feeling like I'm struggling with this. We do a lot of working sessions. I said, don't avoid the elephant in the room. What are we struggling with? and voice notes and really, really hands-on. Mm -hmm. And it's just great to see this business crescendo enormously. Her leadership really develop and just everyone who's in her ecosystem winning. And I mean, winning in life. And I'm like, I love seeing that happen. Well, wow, that's great. I love that story. That's awesome. Um, I know that makes you feel really good. It does. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break because I want to make sure we have enough time to get into some of these great tips that you want to share with our audience. So hang tight, everybody. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. This is Christy and Christine, and we're here to talk about how to get more clients consistently. So I know that there are things that we can do in our business that are going to get results, and we know there are things that we do in our business that don't necessarily get results. Uh, but what can we do? Like, are there habits that we can uh uh, you know, take on on a daily basis that will actually help us get more visibility. Mm -hmm. 100%. And it always starts with the simple understanding you need to know what drives business. And most people don't know this. So here's the Coles Notes version mm -hmm. two things predict your revenue over the next 90 days. And most clients in most service based businesses, at minimum, from discovery to paid client is 90 days or more. So that's why I say staying in the movement is key because while you may have capacity, not today, you're going to have capacity in three months and you need to be building that relationship. But two things are really important to know. Number one, you must be talking to more people because how many people you're talking to that might have need of your services or can connect you to people who have need of your services is going to drive your business. And audience building is the number one priority for every business on the planet. The moment you stop building your audience, and being, uh, you know, really understanding who it is you want to serve, you will create that roller coaster you buy into. You've mm -hmm. created it by the audience piece. So first it's meeting more people, because here's the hint, nobody else tells you this, your business will be built on strangers. One of our biggest fears in life is adults, we don't know how to make friends with strangers, but you got to learn this to be successful in business. It's non-negotiable. The second piece of the puzzle is like, your business only creates revenue when you make offers. Mm -hmm. right. I'm sorry, that's that's, that, that's really as black and white as it is. And an offer is not, I posted about my service on social media. That's not an offer. An offer, somebody who says, I want this result specifically from you. Can you guide it? What does it cost? The investment level is this. This is a predictable result. When do we start? Let's take the credit card. An offer is very, very, very specific. It's not a general, if you want me, come find me. And I think a lot of people think they're making more offers than they do. When in fact, if you're not tracking how many people you're meeting and how many offers you're making, you are distracted mm. by all the noise because yes. only those two things kick your bottom line. So I keep uh, myself in my own business. I check in every month 
and the numbers never lie. If I lose sight of this and I wobble and I get distracted with content or websites or things that don't move the needle and I'm in the wrong rooms, my business will stall and so will yours. So that's the first piece of the puzzle. The second piece of the puzzle is understanding that not all audience members are buyers. And the difference is you must find the buyer. Mm. And buyers are characterized by a couple of things. They are problem aware. And this is the first one that most of us miss. If they're not aware they have the problem, they are not a buyer. Right. Your job is not to convince them and to make them aware. And you can, it's going to be a very slow lane. They're not a buyer. But a buyer is problem aware. A buyer is also somebody who says, I am tried things to get a different result. And usually they're free things, courses, self-learning, YouTube, whatever. They've tried things. And like they're human, they create the same patterns of the input, which means the same results happen. And it's cyclical. You're looking for a buyer who has repeating patterns to be effective in business. That is really important. And the important part is, is when you know that they are patterns and they've said, I'm drawing the line in the sand for a thousandth time. Hmm. You need to know what triggers that. What is the problem is the wrong thing to focus on. So many people in marketing get caught into this pleasure, uh, your pleasure and pain analogy. Right. Let me talk about the problem. We talk about the problem. What if I'm not aware of the problem? You're talking to the wall. But mm -hmm. if you're talking to me and I'm aware I have the problem, I likely will not move towards you, which is an oxymoron, but truth you need to hear. They don't move towards you. And movement is the key to a client offer being accepted. Mm -hmm. Why don't they move towards you is because they are saying, you're talking to me and I feel shamed, called out and judged because I have a pattern that's repeating and I haven't broken it yet. Mm. And if I feel that way about you, I don't want to give you any money. That makes sense. It does make sense. And that's where marketing goes totally mm -hmm. awry. And even in the big businesses, but there's, this is a really big insight here. So instead, don't play there. It's not going to create movement. And your whole goal is movement. Movement from curiosity to paid client. That's the goal line. So instead, I want you to go think about what does the problem cost them? What's the consequence of staying in their own storm? Mm. And when do they pull the line out in the sand and say, for the thousandth time, I'm done with this? Because you need to be able to see it, invite and be present in that moment with no judgment, but some footprints for them to follow from a safe distance because mm. they're pretty vulnerable in that place. And that's the key of audience building because the moment that you can recognize I'm not everybody, I'm one person who's seen and feels like I want to take a movement piece, they suddenly separate from the crowd. And the more you can do this effectively, of course, the more consistent your client growth becomes. People are in three lanes of traffic. One is like someday that's a someday that will be a priority. I might be problem aware, but not my current priority. Don't stay there. That's the longest road to grow your business ever. If somebody's like, I need to do this pretty quickly because this is escalating, that's where your bread and butter client, your buyers are going to build your business with you. The third lane is I already know I'm a hot mess. I've tried other things. I have committed to myself, I won't be here a year from now. And I'm looking for people to solve my problem. And if they're aware of you and you've built the relationship and you've built reciprocity, they're the unicorn client and they come in really quickly hot and say, yeah. I need to do this yesterday. And you're like, where did you come from? But they've come because they've been watching and moving with you from a safe distance. So building buyers and being intentional with your strategies of how do you create movement is key. And staying committed to that because the speed at which your buyer moves, you do not control. You can That's incentivize, true. but you don't control. And so don't bet your future on the next, I had a good conversation. When they're ready, they'll move. Let them move at their pace, but you must stay in activity. And so one, you don't need to know what a buyer is. Two, you've got to focus on movement. And three, you need to commit to being building confidence that you will be there when they're ready. Mm. Too often I see business owners going, I'm so wobbly that you're not building trust. Nobody will give you money if they don't trust you. So build trust first as a human and stay in the movement and show them you're committed and you're ready when they are.
Consistency. Yes. Right. And choose your speed. You know, some seasons are Mach 10 hair on fire. I said, I built my first business one hour a day. But I know even when I'm on holiday, my business looks like I am showing up. I've scheduled content to go out. I know what I'm doing. And what am I doing? I'm inviting them to take the next step. But I'm very intentional in the movement piece. And that's actually one of the biggest blind spots we have as business owners is we think we gave a call to action. We think we made the offer. And most times we really didn't do either. We're not really inviting people. We're educating them. And we talked a little bit about education, but we it's did. not enough to educate them because education is everywhere. If you're going to educate somebody on a result, please be sure that you answer the most important so what question, which is, and here's why you would choose me. Right. If not, they're going to go find somebody else who made that much more connected offer. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking before how uh, some, we tend to as, as entrepreneurs just want to give them so much information we want to help people so you know we we want to deliver all this great stuff but then they don't take action with us and that's just a huge missed opportunity for them and more importantly for for us but more importantly for them because we leave them with things to go do and then then they do it and then they're they don't know what's next and I had a good example of this. I have a copywriter friend of mine who's in my network who actually I, I, I met I met through a podcast and he do, does great content. He's got some really smart things to do. And he's like, here's why you need a copywriter and here's the type of copywriting uh, opportunities out there. And I, I saw it on Instagram and I just sent him a voice and I said, can I give you some feedback, just unexpected coaching just from me? And he's like, sure. I'd love to know what you what you think of my stuff. I said, this is great, but nowhere in here is why I should hire you. Hmm. And they sent me a note. It's like, I can't unsee this now. <laughs> this is the biggest <laughs> gift you've given me. And I just crossed paths with him just yesterday. And he's like, my business is in high momentum with clients coming to work with me. And I have them booked into the fall, which is again, big part of the strategy. I tell my clients, build your pipeline for when you want the start date. So you manage your capacity. And he's like, it's because every piece of content I write now, I look through that lens of and am I saying, here's why you hire us and how to do it? Mm. If you don't, you're missing the big money on the table to create the impact you want. Don't just educate. Educate why they should choose you as the must hire. Yeah. Otherwise, you're a likable expert and you don't get paid. Yeah. So let's talk about the pipeline because you mentioned that twice now, how uh, you're, you have them booked to start in the fall or you have them the book mm -hmm. to start X date. So tell me how that works. Well, I think a big part of it is to start first off sitting down and thinking about what is the dollars and cents of your business? Like you need mm -hmm. to think about the math of your business. How much, how many hours do you want to work? And I mean, client delivery here. How much hours do you want to work with clients? How much revenue is your average program or services and figure out the math and then make sure that you've built 50% of your day still to going to build an audience because you've been to build your pipeline. The stats would tell you that only 3% of people are ready to buy on any given day. So that means you need to be nurturing an audience of potential buyers. That's where the big group is and moving them forward. But when you're clear how much capacity you have and you're clear what the result is that you can help somebody guidedly to get consistently, people come to you and say, I want to work with you. And you're saying, great, I'm available to start you here to guarantee your, your commitment. We'll take a deposit. And you always are managing your capacity and what you do is when people are really confident that you're the person, you have built your dream client list mm -hmm. and you should be looking both as the magnet to attract them into your space. And you should be, as you're building that friendship group, as that audience saying, that's who I really want to work with. And you want to be targeting in your mind. That's who I want to go play with and be building towards that. Because it could be that a lot of people who sit in my ecosystem, they might sit there for years. And yet they're like, when they're ready to go, they're really ready to go because they're like, I saw your business grow in the last year and mine is still in the same place. I should have said yes a year ago when you made me the offer. I said, well, that offer is off the table. And <laughs> I only new offer, right? <laughs> and, and I only allow, I only, I drive my business because it's value creation, very high touch. I don't let, you know, you don't buy a $9 thing on my website and become a client. We, we really have an eyeball to eyeball conversation. And if you're invited in, the offer's made. And if not, I'm going to connect you to resources if you're not there yet, or if I'm not the right person, and I will refer that out. 
but I am managing the capacity and thinking, when do I want to onboard clients and saying, there is only a set number of space I'm willing to work. And I know what those boundaries are for myself. I've set them from life <laughs> that I've learned along the way. And that's why when clients know that, and they're really happy and seeing great successes, like my client story earlier with Ashlyn, she's like, I want you to keep my space for another year. I'm not giving up my capacity. And other clients are, I'm like, we talk about it before contracts come up from renewal. What's the next step for you? How do I, one, continue to support you, which is not contingent on you paying me. It's because I care about you. I will always support you. But I said, if you want to continue, it looks like this. And there might be periods we break, but we commit before we break. I said, if we don't, you'll come back in as a new, whatever the market is available and whatever price the rate is at at that time. And rates change based on capacity. Right. Yeah. Wow. Times, right. This is great. So you actually have a couple of things that you want, or one thing, great thing that you want to share here. You've got a event coming up. Uh, talk, can you talk about that? I do. One of the things that I think is so important, and I and I mean this from a heartfelt place, is I'd like more of you to be succeeding. Like I just genuinely, I want so many people to have the business skills that I had that I just didn't realize I would jumpstart in chapter 10 that most don't. So I run a live event and I do it live because honestly, live is where you're going to hear it, feel it, and hopefully bring awareness to where your gaps are. So I run a live event. It's called How to Scale and Attract High Paying Clients Consistently. It is the roadmap that I use in my own business. It's the roadmap I mentor my clients through in the Business Scale Accelerator Mentorship Program. And it is the gift that you can take and run. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, I will walk you through what are the three foundations you need in a business. And I want you to reflect where your gaps are because bridging the gaps is how you get to your goal line, which is a strong client pipeline, the right dream clients coming towards you, you having confidence where your money's coming from and building the life you want in a way that serves you and the business is the vehicle to do that. And so I run that event twice a month. It's a live one, one hour, you wanna be there because it is your only access to me at this point for free of letting me pick your business at 50,000 feet. What do I hear, see, and help you identify the gaps? And I run them at different time zones. One is an early morning start for the people that are really in the East Coast and Europe, and one in the afternoon time zone, which is great for the Pacific Coast and anybody who's in Australia and New Zealand. So I serve my clients that are global around the life I wanted to create. So come along. You'll find current dates always on my website under the events tab. Love it. Love it. Love it. So this is great. Uh, I really, really appreciate this conversation today. I love the fact that you talked about the key elements and how... I will point at myself, uh, sometimes entrepreneurs get caught up in distractions, yes. you know, things that are keeping them busy, but not necessarily moving the needle in the business. And, and it really made an impact to me how we always have to keep building our audience and make offers. And then the cycle, like the, 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 the life cycle of a client from prospect to close, you know, 90 days, you know, just because somebody says no right now, that doesn't mean they're not standing back watching what you're doing and being ready to say yes and you think they're gone but they're just kind of still they're still kind of making sure that the decision is right so I, there's just a lot that I took from this and it was very I, great. I will tell a stat to you I will tell you 40 percent of the clients that come work with me come work with me after they've had more than one offer mm. not because that they're not confident in me the comment I hear consistently is I have known I was going to hire you for a long time but I got scared and in my way and I thought I could do it on my own. And really the gap comes back and I said, well, we're not offering the same thing. And usually they don't take the small option because at that point they're like, frick, I wasted too much time. Yeah. And I said, you know, hey, I'm not going anywhere. If it's not right for you right now, my, God, my job is not to convince you because I can't be your engine. You have to be your engine. And when you're ready, the first thing I do before I even make an offer is tell me why your engine's lit now. Mm. If you can't answer that, I probably won't make you an offer. Right. I'll resource you. I'll equip you with some other things. Yeah. Like why now? Huh, I love that. Um, all right, so yeah, great, great stuff. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show today. It was just a lot of fun. Love it. Yeah. Yay. And I want to thank everybody for uh, being with us and staying to the very end. If you learned as many things that, I did from Christine, please share it with somebody you know, because we always 
we train, we retain more if we teach somebody else and you're going to be helping them as well. And of course, if you love our show, please show us love on whatever platform you listen, because that is the best way that we're going to keep attracting amazing guests like we have today with Christine. So thanks everybody. And most importantly, thanks, Christine. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening to the Mastery Unleashed podcast, where we believe that everyone can have the business and life of their dreams by turning their mess into their greatest message and following their purpose to help the people who need their newfound wisdom and resources. To learn more, visit MasteryUnleashedPodcast.com. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review to this show.